Hello, this is Peter Combs from P.L. Combs Asian Art and Bitemout.com in Gloucester, Massachusetts. Thanks for visiting. I've always been a fan of later Chinese bronzes, those made in the Ming and the early Qing dynasty in particular. In the market, they've always been sort of the red-headed stepchild, but lately things have started to change in the last few years. There's not a lot of information out there about them, so I thought it'd be fun to do a video on them. They're getting popular, which is a great thing. These later bronzes were made in a wide variety of shapes and styles, though the vast majority that you're likely to encounter out there in the real world, at auctions, antique shops, and even at the occasional yard sale, are going to be incense burners. They were the most popular form. So I thought it would be a good idea to focus on those. You can learn a lot from them, and it's, it's an interesting subject. Most of the bronzes that you'll encounter in the market today that were made during the later periods have the designs of their architectures originally in much earlier examples. On the left here, you have a very early Shang example, and on the right, you have a late Yuan dynasty piece that's been patinated and has many of the same elements. Consider it sort of an updated version through the eyes of the bronze caster. Most of the bronze incense burners that you'll see out there done during the later times were based on this form, the Gi on the left here, this Shang Dynasty uh, piece, beautifully done. It's a food offering vessel. And on the right is a Qing example, very similar in shape, but beautifully patinated and inlaid with gold. Sometimes they were inlaid with both gold and silver. Like Chinese furniture, Cast bronzes of the late Ming period hit their peak. This was done during the late 16th and early 17th century by Hu Wen Ming, probably the most prominent bronze artist of his day. He lived southwest of Shanghai, and uh, he was known for doing these amazingly uh, elegant pieces with these dragon head handles and high relief work throughout. The piece is also signed. Do intricate designs on the handles and get the shape absolutely perfect. Here is another gilt, gilt splashed example. It's beautiful, dot, beautifully done. Is, is the person that wrote this says it has a jewel-like tone. Is that it went through over ten rounds of smelting in its manufacture. Using the lost wax method enabled them to make very elaborate pieces at times, such as this example. The sides of this pot are done in relief work of dragons coming out of the waves and uh, on top are dragons rising up out of the clouds, two very popular themes.
circular examples with the eight trigrams running around the outside and the center is reticulated with chimeras climbing around on it. This is a nice looking one. It has a wonderful old patina. It's never been polished from what I can see. It's in beautiful condition. It also has an apocryphal zone D mark on the bottom. It was made during the 16th or 17th century. The next two examples are forms you are likely to run into out there often without the bronze bases that originally accompanied them. But this is what they looked like when they were first made very often with these lotus petal or flowering petal vase, uh, uh, bases on them. Nice deep color and well shaped. Typically these run about seven or eight, eight inches in diameter. And here is another example, very similar to the previous, except it had the bases a bit more elaborate. It's more, le more petals on the flowers and it has a much better uh, uh, ruby head base. It's also got a very, very lovely deep dry cocoa brown patina on it. And it measures around eight inches in diameter and has a jundi mark on it. It is not from that period, it's slightly later. This is a very nice example with a jundi mark on it. It probably is of the period of 16th century bronze. But it has Arabic script on it, which makes it quite unusual and very interesting culturally for obvious reasons. It's eight inches in diameter and has a nice color. Just be careful out there. They're making a lot of copies of these these days. Also, in, in cloisonne as well. So uh, watch out for them. This is a really nice 17th century bronze with a beautiful color, nice compressed form, well-rounded size, and a lovely uh, lion's mask or uh, foo lion mask handle on the ends. Be, be careful though, this one was marked, um, made by Wu Bang Zhao, supervisor to the Ministry of Works in the fifth year of the Zhongdi period. The mark is apocryphal. They went to great lengths to do them back then, even then. During the Kangxi period in the early Qing dynasty, the shapes continued their evolution of incense burners. In this form, you see sort of a compressed, sleeker version with upper and lower rows of bosses running around the rim and the edge, lower edge, and beautifully done mass candles on raised on three feet. Very nice color. This was something that they continued to make. By the end of the 18th and into the early 19th century, gilt splash work was still very popular, but they began fooling around with handles and adding things like this. You know, the pair of chillongs with bifurcated tails serving as the handles. Very nice example. This was one of a pair originally it was sold by a major auction house not long ago. And it's almost, they reach almost eight inches wide, which made them quite a presentation. During the late Ming and early Qing dynasty, they also made some pretty big examples. This one was over two feet tall with this rather wonderful bulbous body and applied handles and legs and a gilt reticulated lid going over the top. It's rare to find them with the lids like this. This was a big one. You'll also find, if you think about it, you see the same uh, shape was later used in porcelain. During the late Ming and well into the Qing Dynasty, they also made these archaistic form examples, but inlaid with silver forming where the dowdy masks would go. The shape is unmistakable, the uh, drawn from an earlier time, beautiful piece. And um, this one has also a six character Jundi mark on the bottom, which probably made around 1630 to 1670. Now, if you're wondering what some of these bronzes bring these days, we just added onto the Bitamount site and tomorrow we'll add it onto our PL Combs site, a priced auction catalog that was done of the Ulrich Hausmann collection a couple of years ago. There's over 120 lots in there, beautifully illustrated. I think you might find it pretty interesting, so take a look.